Our friends Ray and Sarah came yesterday and he was a huge help with his bigger saw. And, um, and we made these cottonwood pieces pretty big. Some of them are well over a foot tall. Some of them probably more like 18 inches. And we put a layer of spawn in between each of them. And now here we are, it's February 13th in Western Oregon. And so it's gonna be nice and wet for at least another month or two. And I have, a, I have a note in my calendar that a month from now, I'm gonna come in and use something, probably natural moss growing all over the place down in the, this wet bottom part of our property with the stream there. And I'm gonna stick moss in the cracks of this thing. I'm gonna wait a month to try to avoid introducing too much um, local fungus spores. I wanna give the oyster mushroom spawn a chance to take over. And then, um, and then the game is how, uh, how well can we do with preventing these from drying out. When I was researching this totem method, I really wasn't a fan of what I was seeing as far as plastic bags and burlap bags going over the top of them. Um, I just don't like the aesthetic of it. I'm sure it's better from a production point of view. Um, but I want to see if this works, you know. Here we are, down close to a stream with a nice tall slope blocking winter sun. Um, I want to see if the simple way works. We just threw some of the, the chainsaw chips right over the top of them. I'm hoping the fact that we used, you know, pushing two foot diameter by 18 inch thick pieces of wood, that they're really going to hold their moisture and it'd be hard for them to completely dry out. So. Uh, this is where we stand, and now it's, um, other than stuffing in this uh, moss, which will take you along for, it, it's waiting until fall of 2023 for a possible first fruiting, if not, you know, over a year. So this is going to be a long form video, just seeing if this works, if it doesn't. seven months old, a little over seven months old of, uh, of being in this totem formation. And the one thing I wanted to show was that we've got really good mycelium growth down in here. You can see that bright white color. And so uh, the only question really is, will we get fruit in this first year, this first fall, or not? Um, this is a big hunk of wood, so that's a lot to colonize, but there was a la layer of mycelium in the top and a layer below it. So, you know, if it needs to go, what, eight, 10 inches each direction, maybe it makes that in one year. We'll see. But, um, but the other o only thing to note is what's really interesting is there's so much mycelium growth that it's like they're glued together. Like it feels like one piece of wood. I can't, yeah. there's so much resistance to me trying to tip it where when we first built this thing, this, if I shoved, would have just fallen right off. But I'm pushing really hard and nothing's happening. So that's a great sign that it really grew. So cool. really happy with this method and hope it's fruitful because I think it was less labor intensive than the, the other kinds. And I guess the other way to think about it is smaller diameter logs are good for the, the holes and large diameter logs are good for the totem. So. That's it. So we've been harvesting mushrooms off of our one to two year old logs, but Tina was just yelling up at me. Yeah. Our totems already have mushrooms. Look at these. Today, oh, that's a gorgeous mushroom. There's tons. This is, this is blue dolphin, inoculated 
in February of this year and we are in we are today we are October 27th so that was eight months in a couple weeks no that way was pretty fast. that's crazy look at the gills. Look how oh look at look at these baby ones sprouting right here <laughs> so cute <laughs> so this totem method was so easy and the, the only thing I was wondering is okay these big chunky logs is it gonna be a, a long wait but Man, there is a lot of flush happening. This is wild. I'm so happy. So we'll keep monitoring. Only one of the six totems has oyster mushrooms on it. Tina noticed. We don't know what kind of mushroom is growing off of this one, but it's not oysters. It could be something that's just in the bark but doesn't necessarily mean it took over the rest of the log but we'll keep an eye on things how many of those are from the totems um <laughs> had a good harvest this first <laughs> fall All those marks are where we cut I I'd pulled some of this away. I think they were extra buggy because they had pushed out through moss. Oh, okay. Are mushrooms! We grow mushrooms right there. Mm -hmm. What did we grow? We grew mushrooms. We grew mushrooms? Do you, hey, Ivy, do you like eating them? Are they so good? Yeah. When we cook the mushrooms, you better hurry and get some before Ivy eats all of them. <laughs> So we are really pleased in calling this big totem method for our oyster mushrooms on cottonwood a success. I was most surprised by the fact that we got our harvest in our first fall. So we did this in early to mid-February in our first harvest. I'll have to check the date, but I think it was around mid-October. And here we are in December. It's the first day of winter, December 21st. We have a little more. It, we definitely notice if we dipped, if we dip below freezing, they really basically stop growing. But it warmed up again. We've had a mild late fall, and we've still been harvesting a little bit more. And that'll that'll peter out, and then we'll be looking forward to next fall. So we're so pleased with the oyster mushroom project from this year that the totems with cottonwood and the oyster mushroom spawn has been just our favorite way to do mushrooms yet. And the, the oysters have been our favorite for taste actually. They're, they're a really meaty mushroom with just such a nice flavor when you just saute them in butter or olive oil. Um, Tina who's filming is the chef. Do you have anything to add about how the oysters taste and why you like them so much. Their texture is also great. Yeah, a nice texture. Nice texture. They get crisp. Mm. They're not slimy. Yeah, the the small gills seem to be really nice for getting a crisp without burning them. They're delicious. Um, yeah, we've had the best luck with oysters also in terms of, you know, we hear shiitake is a popular gourmet mushroom, but our shiitake logs haven't done well. And we also don't have an abundance of oak to use for shiitake logs, where we have an abundance of maple and cottonwood, which seems to do really well for us with um, oysters. And I think specifically the blue dolphin has been our favorite oyster we've tried so far. We've also had good luck with gray dove, and we just tried some pohu, um, which is kind of a smaller brown one, right, sweetie? Yep. And then we had no luck with a golden oyster, which I think is a, it's listed as a warmer climate mushroom. So it seems to be that cool season mushrooms do well for us here in Oregon. So, so that's it for our year of oyster mushrooms and we're gonna, we're gonna do it again. I have a, one or two cottonwood trees eventually I'll cut down and I'm definitely gonna do this big totem method again because for the amount of mushrooms we're going to get for the work. It seems really efficient. So that's it.
Thanks for watching. Hey, Dada. What's up, man? Who do you think is in the space station right now? I'm sure that's something we could look up and find the answers to. But, Dad. Yeah, but How how did the computer know all this, all this stuff? It's not the computer itself. It's that someone like wrote about it online, and then compute on the internet is like connecting computers, so that if somebody's written about it, you can look it up and find out about it. But like, what if it like changes like every second? It does. So sometimes information is old and out of date, so you want to check.